I'm Kimberly Peterson, Chief of Police with the Fremont Police Department. The goal of this video is to provide you detailed information on the officer-involved shooting which occurred April 1, 2021, as well as to walk you through the video evidence. The suspect in this incident was Stephen Patrick Mosley, a 36-year-old Fremont resident. The following items were recovered at the scene. The suspect's weapon was a Bauer Firearms Corporation, a 25 semi-automatic firearm, fully loaded with one round in the chamber. It was recovered next to the suspect's body. The gun was later determined to be a stolen firearm. We also recovered approximately 2.7 ounces of suspected methamphetamine, and this was recovered from his person. Suspect Mosley had prior arrests for stolen vehicles, drug possession and sales, multiple firearm possessions, brandishing of a firearm, home invasion, burglary, fighting with police, fleeing from police both on foot and in vehicles, assault with a deadly weapon, multiple probation and parole violations, and other illegal weapons violations. Stephen Mosley had several outstanding felony warrants. There were two warrants for vehicle theft, one outstanding warrant for drug possession with intent to sell, one outstanding warrant for a felony probation violation related to weapons possession. On Thursday, April 1, 2021, at about 5 p.m., detectives from the newly created gun violence reduction team were attempting to locate known offender Stephen Mosley. Based on recent contacts with Mosley and information developed over the past month, our detectives were informed Mosley was in possession of a firearm and they confirmed multiple outstanding felony warrants for his arrest. Detectives were able to locate Mosley and his vehicle at the Hyatt Place Hotel located at 3101 West Warren Avenue, Fremont, California. Officers attempted to determine which room Mosley was inside, but when they weren't successful, they decided to make an arrest as he exited the building and walked to his vehicle. The detectives put together a plan with the goal to safely arrest Mosley. Part of the standard planning included contingencies for de-escalation options and the immediate availability of less than lethal tools. When Mosley exited the west side door of the Hyatt Place Hotel, we believe he spotted our detectives sitting outside the door in an unmarked vehicle because he immediately began to run in a northbound direction through the parking lot. Upon seeing Mosley begin to run and realizing they had been spotted, detectives turned on their vehicle lights and siren. Officer Howe, a Fremont police canine handler, gave commands to his canine partner to assist with stopping the suspect from fleeing. As Mosley ran northbound toward the northern parking lot of the Hyatt Place Hotel, Detective Gepp advised he could see what appeared to be a gun in Mosley's right hand. The police canine was able to quickly catch up to Mosley and latch onto Mosley's arm, which resulted in Mosley falling to the ground. As this was occurring, Detective Gepp exited his vehicle and could see that Mosley had a silver firearm in his right hand. After falling to the ground, Mosley began to punch the police canine multiple times and pointed the gun at the dog's head. Detective Harvey ran up to assist with the apprehension of Mosley when he also saw the silver firearm in Mosley's right hand. Detective Harvey and Detective Gepp began yelling, gun, to alert the other officers to the fact Mosley had a gun in his hand as other officers were also arriving on scene. In an effort to de-escalate and create distance, Detectives who were initially moving toward Mosley and the canine in an effort to take him into custody began backing up and moving to cover behind their cars. They shouted several times to put the gun down. During the next few seconds, while Mosley was fighting with the canine, Mosley pointed the silver firearm twice at detectives who were in close proximity. During this time, Detective Gepp, fearing the suspect would shoot at him or other officers, fired his department-issued firearm at Mosley. Simultaneously, Detective Harvey also saw Mosley point the firearm toward him and toward other officers. He too fired his department-issued firearm at Mosley.
Show me your fucking hands! Shots fired. Shots fired at highest place. Start medical code three. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Gun! Gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Give me a shield. Chris, back up! Chris, get back to me. Come back to me. Gun! Gun! Drop the gun! Hey, dog on bike. He ran northbound. Gun! 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 Drop the fucking gun! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Hey, we got shots fired. Dogs on bite start. Uh, 1141 code three. After Mosley was hit with the officer's rounds, he stopped moving and was detained in handcuffs. Detectives rendered trauma care in an attempt to save his life. He was pronounced deceased at the scene by Fremont Fire Department at 6.34 p.m. Had Stephen Mosley survived, the Fremont Police Department would have sought charges for Penal Code 245-D2, assault with a deadly weapon on a peace officer, Penal Code 148-A1, resisting arrest or delaying an arrest, Penal Code 29800, Felon in Possession of a Firearm. Health and Safety Code 11378, Possession of a Controlled Substance with Intent to Sell. The 25 caliber handgun was located near Mosley's hand and had to be kicked away from him before he was taken into custody. The firearms magazine was fully loaded with one round in the chamber. The entire event time between initial contact when the suspect began running and when the rounds were fired was 25 seconds. During this incident, Officer Howe's verbal commands were not working to get the dog to release Mosley's arm. It's our expectation and we do train to ensure the dog can be recalled from a distance verbally. We also have redundancies in place in case a verbal command doesn't work. 
The first redundancy is the electronic caller. In this instance, the handler tried activating his e-caller several times to no avail. We believe we had an equipment failure with the e-caller. We have now replaced the e-caller and we're retraining and recertifying the canine to ensure we're able to recall the dog effectively from a distance. However, it is possible and I believe that the use of the canine may have saved officer lives on this day. The Alameda County Coroner's Office conducted an autopsy of Mosley and stated he was struck five times, determining the cause of death as multiple gunshot wounds. The involved officers who fired their weapons were Detective Grant Gepp, a six-year veteran of the Fremont Police Department, and Detective Josh Harvey, an 11-year veteran of the Fremont Police Department. During the interviews of Officer Gepp and Officer Harvey, they stated they discharged their service weapons because they were in fear for their lives, the lives of their fellow officers, and the public. It was later determined that Detective Gepp fired his weapon seven times. Detective Harvey fired two times. The canine received minor injuries from the suspect during the event. In total, there were 11 officers on the scene within a few moments of when the shooting occurred. Nine officers had body cameras. Two undercover officers did not. Of the nine body camera recordings, five officer views showed the incident from various perspectives. Four camera views were either blocked or did not show the shooting because the officer arrived after it occurred. I'm giving you a bit of context on what has been going on the last few months in Fremont. Since the beginning of 2021, Fremont, like many other major cities across the U.S., has experienced a sharp increase in gun-related crime, including shootings. In 2019, we made 27 separate arrests involving a firearm. In 2020, that number rose to 44. Fremont has averaged about 20 shootings per year since 2017, with 19 shootings in the year 2020. However, this year, we've already experienced 12 shooting incidents prior to April, including two other officer-involved shootings where subjects fired a gun at police officers, causing us to return fire in self-defense. We also had one homicide during a home invasion robbery where a suspect was shot by one of the residents. In response to this increase in gun-related crime, we have established an internal gun violence reduction team bringing several of our investigative team members together to make an effort to proactively prevent or deter shootings and investigate them when they do occur. We are also working with Youth and Family Services on the social services aspect of gun violence prevention. This is a case where in response to a sharp increase in shootings, our officers were asked to arrest a violent offender suspected of possessing a weapon. Although they attempted to use a canine as a less than lethal option, the suspect still chose to confront us with a gun. This event resulted in a tragic loss of life. The members of our department deeply value the sanctity of life and dedicate themselves to protecting others at the risk of their own safety. I'm grateful none of our officers were injured and I want to thank them for being willing to stand between violent offenders and the community.